Hi, this is Mike Clement with Greater Sum. Today we're going to look at a simple technique that will allow us to have our test data be more expressive. We're also going to use this technique to help us understand what it is that's going on with the code without ever having to actually look at the code. So here we're looking at test cases for what looks like some sort of pricing application. Um, by looking at line 28, we can see the name of the test is price books. So we assume that there's going to be some sort of pricing of books. The first parameter is an array of integers, and the second parameter is um, an expected decimal. Those values are being fed by these test cases, um, starting on line 14, going through line 27. So we can see on line 14 that we have an empty array and that we expect zero. And here the test name also tells us that it's called empty. So again, given no books, we have a price of zero. On lines 15 through 19, we can see that each of those arrays has one value in them, and that each time the expected price is eight. You can also see from the test names that it's one copy of each of five different books. Line 20 is where we get a little bit more interesting. We have two elements in the array. We have zero and zero, and then we have an expected value of 16. Our test name reveals a little bit about what it is that we're doing here, and then it says it's, there's two copies of book one with no discount. So we have 16 as our expected value. Now the thing we can improve here is that 16 isn't really the value we're looking for. We're really looking for two instances of eight. So what we can do here is change this to eight times two. Save it, the test will rerun. You can see that we're still passing. On line 21, we can see something different. We see that there's a zero and a one, and the test name says two distinct books give us a 5% discount. And our expected value is 15.2. Without even doing the math, my expectation here is that it's going to be eight times two times 0.95, giving us a 5% discount on those two books. If I save it, I can see that we're still green. Line 22, we can see that three distinct books give us a discount of 10%. This we can say, okay, well, again, we have eight times three. In this case, we're getting a 10% discount, so we put 0 0.90. Again, we'll save and validate that we are still green. Now, lines 23 and 24, again, four distinct books and five distinct books. You can see the same pattern following here. See that in the test that we want a 20% discount. So, and for five, we get a 25% discount. We see that the test passed. So again, our guesses were correct. Um, we can validate that very easily by continuing to run our tests. Now we get to line 25, and 25 is a little bit more interesting. It has 0, 0, 1, and it has 23.2. Now, if we remember that on line 22, if we have three distinct books, we get a 90% discount. Um, and the value there was not 23.2. Here we can see that the test name tells us a little bit. It says two distinct books plus one repeat only gives us a 5% discount. So it seems like if we have distinct books, we get a discount. If we have a repeat, we don't get a discount, which again is another clue we get from line 20. So again, the guess might be that this is going to be we need two books where we get 5% discount plus one additional book. Again, running our tests, we get green. Now here on line 26, we have two sets of the same two distinct books, and we get 5% discount on all of them, right? So we can say probably that it's going to be 8 times 2 times 0.95. And really, it's again 8 times 2 times 0.95. We could make that times two, but it might be a little bit confusing. Here we're being more explicit that we're having two of them. We get a 95% discount. We have two sets. Now on line 27, we have a set of four and a set of two. So using what we previously learned, we have a set of two. We get a 5% discount. And with a set of four, we get 
a 20% discount. Now one last thing we can do here is that we did times 0.95 um, for a 5% discount, but really we're not multiplying by 0 0.95. What we're really wanting to do here is multiply by 1 minus 0 0.05. And there we can see that the 5% discount becomes even more obvious. We can do the same thing with a 10% discount, same thing with a 20% discount, and so on. This simple technique can be used to make any numeric test data more expressive by breaking it down so that you can actually see what it is the numbers mean, not necessarily just what the numbers are. Hope you're able to use this technique successfully in your work. Thanks again, this has been Mike Clement for Greater Sum.